Hello, this is Tom Platts of 3. Today I'm going to do a demonstration of how to quickly produce this silly little bomb, this nuclear bomb fat boy asset you know, in a way that I think is pretty fast. So let's just get into it. If you've ever made a 3D model before, you just make some shapes and you put them in the spot that you want them to go in. This one here, uh, for reference, I'm using the fat boy nuclear bomb. For this style of asset, I think a uh, problem that I had is I made some of the edges too thin actually, but whatever. So once the low poly mesh is made, I just group that and call it low so I can save it for later since that's the one I'm going to use to bake textures with. So we make the low poly and then make the high poly of that, so low to high. Obviously adding edge loops to, to make a high res version of this low poly model. Pretty straightforward, regular modeling stuff, just make it subdiv. reads. I had a problem with the, the back of it, uh, the back section, so I selected the low and high uh, part and just scaled it around until I thought it was slightly better. When they're both selected simultaneously and, and they both have the same origin point, uh, if I move it and scale it, it's not going to misalign anything. So I save the Maya file, and then I export the high poly as well. So take it into ZBrush now. Um, I just smooth out the mesh a little bit more, and then time for the DynaMesh. Uh, the aim is to merge every part together for this style of prop. Since it's symmetrical on two axes, I'm gonna use mirroring for the brushes. And effectively, all I'm doing is just smoothing all these meshes together. Yeah, just stylistically. I think it's very easy to pull off. Uh, right here, I'm doing some touch up with Trim Dynamic, but that's not essential. I'm just smoothing all the meshes together and then re-dynameshing it so that uh, everything blends together smoothly as if it was modeled like that in the first place, like a skillful modeler would actually do. This is as lazy a workflow as I could find for producing lots of assets quickly. The sculpt is done and chuck it out. Yep. Uh, UVing. Uh, going back to Maya to do some UVs with the low. You should already know how to do UVs. So what I'm doing right here is these really flat 90 degree edges. I'm putting supporting edge loops in there so that when we get back into, like when we get into the game engine to end up with, we don't want those weird normal. So making sure nothing goes like a 90 degree corner on a face to another 90 degree corner of a face. Um, we don't want that. So break it up with a edge loop. And Substance Painter, just test baking the normals first, get all the numbers right. Um, the style of model I'm doing right now, it only has a base color and emissive, and the metallic is just set to 0.5 for every asset. Um, and so here's an example of one I made earlier, so I want to try and copy that style. What I like to do to begin with is I set up a diffuse layer so I can just copy that out and that's only got the color in it. And then I also have a layer with a gradient with a planar projection, no repeating, crop to shape and without depth culling. This is how I like to texture these assets. It's nice and fast and all it is is a fill layer with a gradient, planar projection and that's how I color assets in using that often with overlay layer mode, blend mode, and the rest is fairly self-explanatory, just using some edge filters and a lot of gradients.
when I do texturing, I just treat it as playing. So this is all just messing around. Just trying to get the style fairly similar and trying to get uh, everything to look like it's built together, uh, meshed together somehow. Even though there are some artifacts where polygons intersect, um, just trying to paint over them or, or texture it in a way which doesn't expose it. Basically, you can uh, watch this part on two times speed or whatever. You can skip to 10 minutes if you're tired of seeing gradients being duplicated and moved around. Here I'm using an actual alpha with the projection mode, uh, number three to go to the projection mode and just a nuclear symbol or whatever because it's a nuclear bomb and just painting that onto a black mask of a white fill layer. 
and do the same thing on the other side with some old silly old decals, whatever. Pretty straightforward. Really didn't need to have anything emissive there. I did it anyway. I'm not very clever. Whatever. The model's done. Who cares? Boom. How long did that take? What, like 10 minutes? Realistically, this took me about 45 minutes. I'm gonna crank open Unity and set it up there, see how it looks compared to the other things. I have a similar model here, which is of the same family tree, the same genus as this uh, nuclear bomb I just made. So I'm going back and forth between Unity and Substance Painter just to get the style the same. Now I'm just going to copy over some particle effects that I prepared earlier and create a slow rotation animation that can be played on loop for the nuclear bomb here inside of Unity. That is a fully finished 3D model with textures, with particles, with an animation, projectile, ready to go, done, it's in the game, it takes about 50 minutes from start to being in the game with particle effects so long as you already have the systems in place for whatever you need, very straightforward. Hopefully this video has helped you, if not, uh, Thank you to everyone who's interested in 3D computer graphics and uh, have a good night.